This is how you do a paper cutout effect in Photoshop. All right, so before we get started, let's just look at the assets that we're gonna need for this project. So you obviously need an image that you're gonna cut out, preferably one that you can see all the way around the subject. That just makes the effect look better. You're gonna need white crumpled paper as your texture. You need another texture that you're gonna put in the background and some tape. But just know that I have all the assets that I used linked in the description below. Okay, so once you have your image opened in Photoshop, the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate our main image twice. So we're gonna go Commander Control J once and then Commander Control J twice. This one at the top, we're gonna to name subject. And then this one right here, we're gonna name paper. And we can leave background like this, just click this to unlock it. Then we're just gonna hide the top layer and hide the bottom one and then click on the paper layer. Make sure you select it on the paper layer. Then we're gonna to go to the third tool down right here. You're probably seeing the lasso tool like this. Just right click and change it to polygonal lasso tool. And then just kind of a little bit on the outside of your subject, you're gonna kind of pretend like you're cutting the subject out. So try not to be perfect. If you have straight lines the whole way around, it doesn't look good. So kind of make some mistakes on purpose, leave like some jagged edges around. So you're just gonna go quickly, don't think about it too much, around the outside of your subject until you've completed the path all the way back to the start. Once you see the dotted lines, then just go over here to this little box with the circle in it, click that, and that's gonna put a mask on that layer in that shape. Then we're just gonna hide that layer and click on the eyeball for the subject layer. Make sure you're clicked on the subject layer as well. This time we're gonna to go to the fourth tool down. Again, you probably see the magic wand tool. So right click and go to quick selection tool and then just click on this little button right here, select subject. Now for most images, Photoshop is gonna do a good job of selecting your subject. If you do have a section that's sticking out that you don't want as part of your selection, just go up here to the minus or while you're on the plus, just hold alt or option. It'll change to the minus anyway and then just paint out the part that you don't want as part of your selection and vice versa if you have a part that's indented that you need to add into your selection just go to the plus and paint back in what you need just know for this project the selection does not have to be super perfect so once you have it looking pretty good then just head back to the little rectangle with the circle in it click on that and it'll put a mask around your subject this time then just head over and click the eyeball so we can see all three layers again now we're ready to start putting in our textures. So we're gonna start by clicking on layer zero, which was our background layer, and then just going up to file, place embedded, and we're gonna use this texture, not the paper texture yet, the background texture. So double click on that one. It's gonna plunk it in, make sure you stretch it out so it fills up the whole canvas. If you need to rotate it, just go out and rotate it. If yours is landscape, for example, I'm gonna put that back like this. When you have it good, then just click check then all we're gonna do here is add, go to this little half circle thing here, and we're gonna add a hue saturation layer above it. That allows us to start by changing the color if you slide this hue slider. So I'm gonna pick blue all the way left here. I'm gonna drop the saturation a bit so I don't want it so punchy in the colors, and I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. But as you can see, it's not quite good yet. And if I make it darker, then it just makes it like really dark and I, I can try and crank up the blue. Like you can try and mess with it there. I found a pretty good strategy is then to just go on the texture and then go control L. That's gonna bring up levels. And this allows for kind of greater control of the contrast. So if you slide it to the right, slide this one to the right, it just creates a, a better looking kind of textured background that is connected to the hue saturation color that we picked. So. I think that one looks pretty good, maybe a little bit darker, and then just click OK when you have what you want. You can obviously still go back to hue saturation and now change your color so you can see you know, what you like with that new levels adjustment on the background. Next, we're gonna click on the paper layer and go back up to file, place embedded. This time we're gonna select the paper texture, so I'm gonna double click. Again, place it how you want it, so I'm gonna rotate this one. I'm just gonna type in 90 up here and stretch it out so it goes beyond the limits of that layer. So right there, click check. And then all you're gonna do is right click on the layer over here and select create clipping mask. 
And as you can see, that's going to make sure the texture only shows up where we made this mask, which is the shape of the cutout. And just so you know, you can mess with how the paper looks as well by using the same levels trick that we did for this background texture down here. So I'm going to click back on the paper texture, go command or control L to bring up levels again. I'm going to make this one, the paper a little bit brighter than it was in the darks, so like bring up the shadows a little bit. And then down here, then I'm just going to move this one over a little bit to brighten up some of the darks to kind of brighten up my paper a little bit and then click OK. Now, the only other thing we're going to do to this middle paper section is to add a little bit of a drop shadow. So to do that, make sure you're clicked on the paper image layer, not on the texture layer. And then you're just going to double click to the right over here. That's going to bring up the layer style menu. And then just click on the word drop shadow, not on the little box, but right on the word. And we're going to mess with just a few things up here. So I think opacity, and I'm going to zoom in just so you can see kind of this bottom edge right here. So opacity at around 70 is probably pretty good. Uh, distance, it, it'll depend on the image, but mine, I think, around 12. You just want a little tiny bit showing up. And I'm going to keep the size at 6 for the blur. I just want it to be a little bit blurry, not very much. And then the most important thing, though, is angle. You want angle to be at, like, probably 70 as well. Because you don't want it showing up on the side. You just want it kind of at the bottom underneath right here. And obviously, that'll make sure it's not on the top as well. And then just click OK. All right, so now we're ready to put the texture on our actual image. So to do that, we're actually going to do a couple things first. So you're going to click on your subject layer and then go Command or Control J to make a copy. On the copy layer on the top, you're going to go up to Filter, down to Other, and select High Pass. And you just want to slide this along until you can see you know, just some of the details coming through. You don't want to make it like crazy like this. You just want to see some of that kind of fine texture detail kind of popping through. When you have it looking pretty decent, click OK. And then right here where it says Normal, change that blend mode to Overlay. Next, we're going to click back on the main subject layer and then hold Command or Control and click on the Subject Copy layer to make sure they're both selected. Then you're going to go Command or Control J to make a copy of both, and then Command or Control E to merge them together. Hide both subject copy and the original subject layers. And then while you're selected on the subject copy 3, in my case, right click on it and convert it to a smart object. That's going to allow us to put a few different things on here and then still mess with them in the future if we want. So all of these next things are all completely optional. So I'm going to put on a few, and then you can see what you want to keep for yours and what you don't. Okay, so first I'm going to go up to Filter and down to Stylize, and I'm going to add oil paint to it. So I'm going to keep them both kind of around the middle here somewhere. I don't want to crank it too much. Adjust yours to see if you want, you know, kind of an artsy cutout, or if you want a realistic one, then just avoid this one completely. But somewhere around four or five in there looks good for mine. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go back up to Filter. I'm going to go into Filter Gallery. And I think a cool one in here to add, because it kind of makes it look you know, like a photocopy almost that looks good on a piece of paper, is Film Grain. And as you can see, I just have mine at 4, 3, and 3. You can adjust those to get you know, what you like. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go back up to Filter one more time and go to Camera Raw Filter. In Camera Raw Filter, I'm really just going to mess with Basic. So I'm going to drop this down, and I'm going to cruise down here and start with Clarity, which I'm going to crank up pretty high. I think in this case, the reason why I like it is because it really emphasizes that kind of like photocopy, sketchy kind of look. So I'm going to crank that, maybe even add a little bit of texture in as well, a touch of dehaze, and then I'm going to go up here. And for mine, I'm just going to eliminate a little bit of the highlights, I think, just drop them and maybe crank up the shadows to bring up some of that darkness. Again, just for that kind of photocopy, kind of bad look in there, I think, in the shadows. I'm going to turn up the vibrance a bit and then take away some of the saturation. So that's the look I'm going for. You can do whatever you want in here and then click OK. And now all we have to do is add the paper texture over top of our main image here. But we're going to do it slightly different than we did last time. So for this method, all we're going to do is go down to our paper image that we had before that has levels on it, the smart filter. Go Commander Control J 
to make a copy, you're going to see that it's not going to be a clipping mask anymore, this little arrow thing. It's going to be an actual layer. Then we're just going to bring it above the two layers that we hid before. So our original subject layer and then the subject copy that we added high pass to. And so it's going to be right above those, but right below our very top merged subject copy three that has all of our smart filters on it. Then all we're going to do is hold command or control, click on the thumbnail of subject copy three. It's going to make a selection around our subject the way we had it before. And then while we're selected on the paper layer, not on subject copy three, we're just going to go down here to the little box with a circle in it and put a layer mask. At this point, it's still going to look like nothing happened because now we have to click back on our subject copy three layer and change our blend mode from normal to multiply. You can pick something else if you want a more extreme look. So you can click through these and or scan through them and see if there's something else that you like instead. But I'm going to select multiply and then I'm just going to go to opacity and I'm going to drop it from 100 down to about 90. But just know we can also impact how the overlay looks over our image by going back down to the paper texture, the one that we had copied. And since it still has the smart filter on it, we can just double click on levels and mess with these sliders again to get a different look for the overlay. So if I crank this over, you can see that the like mid tones, like the dark start creeping in a lot more. So you can kind of play around with these. I'm going to darken those a bit. Maybe this, bring this back and maybe slide around like this a little bit. So just play around with these until you get the overlay looking how you want and then click OK. And then obviously you can also go back to any of your smart filters here on subject copy three to manipulate how the actual image is showing through as well. So for example, I can double click on camera raw filter. That'll bring me back in. And since this is looking maybe a little bit too dull for what I wanted, I can maybe bump up the exposure if I want to brighten it a bit. Maybe I want to, you know, even have more vibrance and bring some more color back in or crank the clarity, you know, adjust it however you want, click OK, and then it'll update on your main image right here. Next, we're just going to add the little bits of tape that kind of go around the outside to make it look like it's being taped up on this surface over here. So I have this one right here, Aesthetic Tape PNG. It comes with a bunch of colors, but I'm going to go down to this very bottom one, kind of the neutral one. And since it's already a PNG, I just have to go to my rectangular marquee tool here and I'm just going to make a box around it and then just go edit, copy, go back to my project and then just go edit, paste. And make sure you're selected on subject three at the very top when you paste it, because if not, it might show up like this, like you don't see it. Just know that it might be underneath another layer. So just grab it and drag it up so you can see it. Then go to your move tool and drag it to where you want it. So I'm going to plunk this one right here and then command or control T if you need to rotate it and, you know, resize it or anything to put it into place. So I'm going to just kind of put one right there on an angle and click check. Then we're just going to go over to the tape layer. I'm just going to double click here and call it tape one. And we're going to double click to the right over here again. So way to the right, double click. That'll bring up the layer style menu. We're going to put a drop shadow on this as well. So click on the word drop shadow again. I'm going to leave the opacity at 70, I think, for now. But I'm going to uncheck use global light. And then down here for distance, I'm going to make this like two or even one. Like we want it to be kind of barely showing up. And then maybe drop this a couple two to like four. So it looks like the tape is kind of just over top of the other thing. And then click check. Now, if you want to change the color of the tape, all you have to do is go up to Image, Adjustments, and go to Hue Saturation while you're selected on the tape layer, and click Colorize. Now we can just slide this along and pick whatever color you want. If you want it to be like black and white, just slide Saturation down. If you want it to be brighter, more like white tape, then just slide the lightness. If you want it to be darker, just slide it to the left. So I'm going to go to the right a little bit for this one but I'm going to bring up the saturation and make it, you know, maybe kind of a light, a light blue or something in there and then click OK. To add more tape, you just got to click on tape one and go command or control J to make a copy and then use your move tool to place it in the next spot. So I'm going to go over here, command or control 
T to rotate it and place it in where I want it. Click check. And then again, to change the color, you can just go up to image, adjustments, hue saturation, again, colorize, and then we can just change it to a different color, you know, do whatever you want there and click check. And that's it. That's how you make a paper cutout effect in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.